getting ready again. Sorry for the slight delay in getting to the match, but we are going to be uh, done once this match is over and we'll be checking it over to the Americas region to get off their first day of this final round robin week. So make sure to stay tuned once we are done, of course. But for now, let's kick it off. Swids on the top on Demon Hunter and Zim on the bottom also on Demon Hunter. I bet they have an entirely smooth day with zero technical issues, Raven. I, I know, just, yeah. I just see it. Just feel it in my loins. Darkness <laughs> surrounds us. Darkness surrounds us. Hallows in. Wow. True symmetry. The classes. The flags. The scores. The emotes. <laughs> And most of the hands as well. Yeah, for the most part, the <laughs> hands as well. They're both hero powering turn one, finding something slightly awkward to do on turn two, it seems like, and then actually just progressing through to a Panthara. Swids kind of has the slight advantage here because he does at least have something to do on turn two right now with the uh, the one maker. Yeah, arguably even the Chaos Strike is decent, right? Not something yeah. you generally want to have, but something that's better than nothing. It does continue to surprise me that they... The, that we don't really see Panthera played on curve in like any matchup more, more or less mm -hmm. uh, when it, it looks weird to do but card draw so important for Zim uh, and yep. for Demon Hunter in general of course yep yeah I remember talking to a life coach way back in the day when he came over to a Gfinity event that was held in London and I was talking to him about his handlock philosophy at the time. And just the way Life Coach thinks about things is super fascinating. He was talking about spots aggro, where you should tap and where you shouldn't shot. tap, like if you're playing against aggro, for example. And he's like, well, if you know, if you have an antique heal bot in your deck and you have eight cards left, that antique heal bot's going to heal you for eight when you draw it. So each life tap is worth two health when you, when you life tap, right? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? But you can kind of break that down in the same way as Demon Hunter, right? Where you have so much healing and damage mm. buried in your deck that each card that you draw kind of represents an average amount yeah. of damage and or healing over the course of the game, which usually vastly eclipses the benefits of just having a 2-3 on the border turn earlier. I will say one uh, thing that is probably outdated now from that philosophy was when he was counting up val uh, deck value. Saying, oh yeah, I value him because if you add up all the mana cost of cards left in yes. my deck, uh, I win like... Won't work now, mate. <laughs> like, it's, not, it's not a Hearthstone, is now. If it costs one, it probably generates ten spells. Yeah. Um, but getting back into this game again, fairly even. Decision point now for Zim, as he does have his Marrow Slicer available. Uh, he, which is probably okay here, actually. I, I put a very high priority on getting this skull to the far left of Zim's hand. And he does have the capability to do that with Mario Slicer this turn, and then potential Soul, uh, soul Shear and Blade Dance the turn after. Right. And even though that might sound a little bit silly, the, the kind of respect we give Blade Dance as a card in Demon Hunter, I think mm -hmm. in the mirror, it's a lot more playable to just like, oh, it killed a minion. Oh, it killed two small minions. It's fine. Especially if that gets you to Skull, right, because I think Skull is so valuable here that you can really take control of the game if you're that one turn ahead of your opponent. Yeah, I think that's very fair. I think if it kills two or three minions in the mid game of any size, you'll certainly call that a win. But I completely agree that you know, Sim's hand right now looks like it needs to curve into that skull on mm -hmm. in most situations, yeah, unless he's able to find uh, some sick shard shatter play instead. But some way of doing that right now. Yeah, I mean, d depending on what happens here, he could just say, "Oh, I'll just play shard shatter and chaos strike." Just to... mm -hmm. the only problem is though, then when is this skull being played? Like, right? Like, right. if there's any option to get the skull to the left, I think Zim goes for it. Now, having said that, this does look like a much better board for Shard Chatter than the alternative. I think I'd still Soul Shear. I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I guess really there's also the, the Pen Flinger consideration, right? Where you can go is true. Pen, hmm. Chaos, Pen, but it's a bit awkward because you then end with your Pen Flinger on well, board and it's still not a clean answer to the board state. You could just so you could go Pen, Soul Shear. Yeah, yeah. And then just Hero Power, right? Right. Or actually just Chaos Strike if you really wanted to. I actually do think I like the Chaos Strike here. It's generally only super important to like eke out every point of damage from your hero power in spots like this. Like 
when you don't have enough value in your hand already, right? Like, if, if you already yep, have yep, enough yep. mana to spend over the course of the game, you don't need to be 100% mana efficient and squeeze everything out. And since Zim has one Chaos Strike that he just used, another Chaos Strike in his hand, and Skull of Gul'dan in his hand, he's going to have enough stuff to do for the next few turns, right? So I like being aggressive there. Alas, poor warlock. Twid's getting off this Skull. Well, he's going to be pretty nice. Doesn't really hit the big cards, unfortunately, for him. You're really looking for uh, either the weapons or the lapidaries, or depending on build, you know, like, for example, Altrius for either of these players would be a big deal. Kane is nice as well. Just reducing right. any of the high-cost cards down a bit is much better than making a one or two-cost card zero. Uh, the only difference, I guess, is, like, the, uh, the Aldraki Warblades from 3 to 0 is, uh, is obviously huge. This is a very awkward hand to play right now for Zim. Just Blade Dance! <laughs> I grow impatient. I'm not even joking! <laughs> so... My constant talking of Blade Dance is, is Zim actually making or having worse turns because he isn't blade dancing than when he than if he would have just had it gone by now and scold is my he, question i mean yes this turn is worse than if he'd have gone soul sheer blade dance on the previous turn yes because my fear uh generally is the more of that you do the further and further behind you just fall, and then it's too late. Then, then a skull has to draw the perfect cards to yeah, keep you alive. But I don't think he's reached that point yet, right? Because he's still pretty comfortable in where he's at in the game state, I would say. I think he's getting really close, though. Okay. Because it only takes one charge out of this turn, and he's lost the board, and then just has, like, Penflinger Chaos Strike, which is fine. But it's not really a powerful turn. Mm. Wait, has Swit's got no, uh, no soul fragments in his deck? He's not, right? Nope. Wolf, that hurts. <laughs> and now he can't play that. Swit's is playing around it like a god. <laughs> <laughs> I grow impatient. Yeah, this looks like Penflinger, Cow Strike, Mara Slicer again. Mm -hmm. He's now at least getting himself into the position where he has an opportunity to maybe even play that skull from the right if he's insistent that he's not going to play it from the left. He's oh, Penfl okay. Double Penflinger might make that <laughs> slightly awkward, though. <laughs> oh. So how much damage does Switz have? Hand is full. Those two second slices, I believe, there. Yeah. Four, six. He just needs these these uh, lapidaries live, and he just only well, just been a one maker, right? Yet again, uh, is this ever like the far left lapidary hero power dance, and then play the? Uh, the companion, or he could weave in a uh, a penflinger. Demons. Demons. Yeah, it's probably slightly better to spend the one on the penflinger if you're going to do that so, turn, yeah. right? Yeah, generally, the companions of hunter or demon hunter variety are significantly more powerful if you already have a board. So the alternative is just to like maximize penflinger damage this turn and dump a bunch of slices sure. instead. But it, like again, without a soul fragment draw, you've kind of tapped out of damage at that point, right, in your hand. So I'm not really sure how you're. Yeah. yeah, I'm not really sure how you're following that up. That is now the Warblades dealt with as well, so Zim knows the number that he has to deal with, at least for now. It's 22. Okay. Now he's doing it. He's got the other one. He's fine. He's chilling. He's he... absolutely chilling. Alas, poor warlock. 
Nice. Oh, Lapidary's good. Kane's good. Those are good. Those are good draws. Those are very Those nice are the cards, cards you indeed. For. Yeah. yeah. Embarrassment Zim. of riches on one side here. Zim has six soul fragments in his deck. So Swiss is zero right now. Is he considering swinging the Warblades? Surely not. Hmm. I mean, if you're keeping track, you know there's no fragments in there, right? So it needs to be a fragment draw into what to end up killing you. I'm not entirely sure it exists, right? I don't think so. With the now. discounted with the discounted cards spent already? Like, I just I don't see yeah. it. No. Agreed. Again, oh, look at this, though. Oh. <laughs> what? What? Are you okay? No, it hurts. <laughs> And this is the issue, right? It's very easy for me to say, you know, sat back looking at these hands and saying this, but I, the turn previous of pushing that extra bit of damage with the pen flingers and, and mm -hmm. using the, the slice and stuff, mm -hmm. like, was that just better than playing a 5-5? Five -five? Hey, yeah, that's a good question. Oh. Hey, loser. It did look sketch to me as well because I just didn't really see how he intended to be following it up, you know, with the, the hand that he had at the time. It didn't set up lethal, and it made his next turn generally, well, probably bad, right? right. Like, it, 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 the issues for me. <laughs> Look at this. The, these are the cards you want to hit. Like, there's skull pain off now for Zim. Like, look how much Boom. damage Get he's out. packing into this. It's just game. Like, it's so, so much better there from the skull from Zim. He takes game number one in that Demon Hunter mirror. That's step number one towards winning this series and making himself extremely safe in Division B. And I'm gonna go some way to to defend my boy Zim here. I think he uh, I think he's had some uh, some sketchy moments throughout the the season for sure. But that skull did get cast pretty much at the exact moment where his hand ran out of value. Right? He was he was able to sure. play everything else and like function with Maris slices and chaos strikes and and everything else and be pushing damage. And then the exact moment where he didn't really have anything else to do that turn, rips the skull, and then the skull wins the game the next turn. Now your criticism might still just be entirely valid because what he ended up beating on the other side was a pretty miserable looking demon hunter draw. So what happens if he actually has to contend with a strong demon hunter draw? That actually right. has all the soul fragments and everything else active at that point. Um, but just based on timing from a, from a single player's uh, perspective, um, it seemed like Zim did okay. There. Yeah, it, it's, two, it's two schools of thought as well, right? Uh, generally, I think this is my own bias of how I like to play. Is I like a hand full of resources, some cheap, to then say, what do my next two turns look like? Sure. Uh, whereas there's also the other way saying, oh, my hand's running out. Boom, skull, got stuff again, let's go. So mm. the, neither one is good or bad, it's just they're different, right? So we did see the sort of the second plan uh, pay off as him there. So it's a little bit unfortunate, I think, being dry on those uh, soul fragments for much of, if not all, the game. <laughs> so it's a little bit unfortunate, but we are swiftly moving on to our game number two. Swid's on the top on that priest, which is uh, one of the few other players playing Highlander Priest uh, against Zim's Druid. So we get to see Druid in action. I do just want to throw in one more point uh, to your defense as well, supporting your argument, is that I think Blade Dance is a much less important card to keep in that variation of the matchup, um, where there's right. there's pen flingers instead of Gladebound Adepts, for example. Like, mm -hmm. suddenly no when... No Magtheridon. Yeah, no, no Magtheridon. When you're playing against a deck that has Magtheridon, Gladebound Adept, um, five fives, like, they can actually make a big mid-rangey board that you actually want to Blade Dance away, right? Whereas against that version of the deck... Doesn't feel like it's as uh, useful a utility card, but that is indeed now in the past, and we shall move on to test number two, the nerfed druid. It's a different test because Zim has a different build, and um, he does find himself with the guardian animals in his opening hand, much like Boar Control did earlier, and lacking the hard ramp to get there, much like Boar Control did earlier. Yeah, and the uh, big difference is here in Zim's list. I did mention it a while ago, but uh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Uh, joke. Um, it's the there's no mount sellers in this list. There's Kelthas, Forest Ward Nomu, we can see in hand, Double Survivor the Fittest, Ysera, and then the, the usual basically. So what this is is a um, outside of Ysera, a a fixed amount of threats uh, in the deck. 
that Swids, if you dealt with, just wins the game. Uh, there isn't just generation of threats like there is from Mount Cell turns. Uh, but what it is is potentially higher power uh, output from Zim. But so far, no ramp means this is going to be uh, at least a little bit slow. Is that Twilight Runner here, right? I think all three of these are, uh, options are pretty attractive, mm. honestly. I think Twilight Runner draws cards quicker and it's not like the answer can be there for Zim, right? There's just no answer to a stealth Twilight Runner from Druid. What about... If he doesn't play another minion next to it, I guess. What about Coin Evasive Draconid? You interested? No. Oh. <laughs> um, ah, I mean, Twilight Runner is a... It, like, pressures a little bit on board and draws cards. Are those not the things you want? <laughs> no! Let's go, Swords! <laughs> I guess there's Apotheosis this turn. Mm hmm. That's, like, my, my issue really was like, well, what does turn four look like? And I guess if it's right. Apotheosis, then fine. Hidden words over a second Apo there as well, which I think is certainly worth looking at. Okay. Game, Game of Hearthstone. <laughs> Commence. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Just one card that has to be drawn. Be like, okay, right, now we can play. Now we can play. <laughs> so yeah, now Coin Evasive Draconid is a possibility if Swids would like it here. But it is now going to line up into the Guardian Animals turn, which is less than ideal. Hmm. Swids did get a good peek at the hand, though, and he knows all three of the cards that he looked at are still currently in there. So he knows a good chunk of the contents of the hand. He just has to do it, right? He took coin. I think he's just pinned into this play. Yeah. Swids has one runner, one thresher, one teacher's pet to come out of this uh, guardian animals. Uh, oh, two of those correct. three, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they nerfed it to eight mana, but it now summons every beast in your deck and gives it rush. Yeah. Make that a hunter card, is all I'm saying. So quite have enough to clear this. Uh... Oh, never mind. Oh, what were never you saying, mind. Raven? What were you saying? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, you nothing. want to say that again, buddy? Yep, he just about has enough to uh, clear this board. Okay. I would assume that the mass AoE, the Shadow Word Ruin, will get preserved here. Yep. He can use this to clean up very nicely with the Holy Nova. Yep, I think this is a good spot. Keeps himself the Ruin and the Death and the Forbidden Words for uh, more difficult scenarios. Oh, oh wow. the Ysera off the top is insane, though with overflow to back up, animals to back up as well. Honestly, the only thing Zim's really looking for now is a broom. And honestly, the second that any of these dragons stick to the point where they get to attack, game over, savage rule. It's just going to end the game at this point. Zim took that turn one off the nature studies, mm. just recognizing, I think, it's a, it's a decent shout in the priest matchup because... There might just be one or two turns where you do actually get to represent some pressure, right? Where the priest is just starved of answers for maybe one turn, and then, you know, there are a couple of cards away in their deck from that uh, that Plague of Death, that Zephyrus, whatever the top deck might need to be to get them out of it. You can just take those outs away if you can just convert the board that you stuck for one turn into killing your opponent. Yeah, e even through Wave of Apathy, right? Like, mm -hmm. it it's enough a lot of the time, as long as you've done some damage, which it, it will just purely because this Ysera is not going anywhere anytime soon for a start. This Swid's desperate enough to just play Lucia. Wow. I mean, he's not really giving much to his opponent, oh. is he? Oh, oh I would have greeded. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, yeah, I guess he couldn't play Lucia then at that point, right? 
I would, yeah, but I'd like, I was thinking don't even forbidden words the yeah, Ysera, just pass. So you, you yeah, just yeah, get yeah, the yeah. 12 health, you get the 813 on the next turn. It seemed kind of insane to me. He can still do that, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, My seems to have come back here. Self Defender. Don't think anything else needs to get played here while you have Kael'thas in your hand. No need to turn your 412 into a 5 attack minion so it can just get Shadow Word deathed. Of course, we can see that the Natalie Selene is going to tidy up here pretty effectively, but... Mm -hmm. Does it get to push three with this Anubisath, though? Hell yeah. And although it doesn't sound like a big deal, that if Zim keeps staying one minion ahead of, of the board, then the this Savage Roll will just end the game at some point, right? Right. But there is an 8.13, so the prospects of being ahead on board have slimmed down a little bit. But there is now a pretty nice looking Kael'thas dump your hand overflow again opportunity on the following turn for Zim to fill up on dragons once more. Mm. Ooh, Insta Dragon. And Huge. Giant. Enormous. Yeah, I was going to run out of synonyms eventually. Oh wow, the the Gidra as well. Is there any way he can make something happen with this Gidra? Maybe to clear off? Yeah, the Natalie Celine. Right. What to do? I think it can, but it costs a lot of overdraw. <laughs> like... Yes. I think the Kalthas potential is too high now though. The problem is, like, your board is so sticky with the exact shape that you have right now. Like, I almost don't want to, like, draw through my deck to Survival of the Fittest and play it. Like, if, I feel like I'm making myself more vulnerable yeah, to I, removal spells. That, that's why I was trying to look at Gidra just to kill the 813 and call that a day. Because right. Because that's probably just enough, or at least it feels like right. it. I, I do actually agree with you on that. Yeah. So I guess there's a certain element of... Wait, what? So what if he has an 813? This discount work out, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, so Shadow Word Death can kill off the 88 as the highest uh, damage target. The Selene. No, he has not. to death the 610 so he can trade the 88, right? Unless he wants to use the Shadow Word Ruin. Because the the, yeah. the, the Natalie can kill the 8-8, it can't kill the 6-10. Yeah, you are right. Ah, oh, this is pretty horrible, actually, from Swids, isn't it? Sorry, not, yep. not like from Swids. <laughs> He's not done anything wrong. <laughs> uh, just, just on Swids' side of the board, this is a pretty horrible turn. Disgusting scenes from know, Swids yeah. right now. Jeez, what is he Swids? doing? Sort yourself out. <laughs> Make this turn good. You can draw, draw Wave of Apathy Soul Mirror already. What are you doing? Oh, I feel bad for saying that because it's just not what I meant. Yep. Just has to. Yeah. And respect the KT over the damage. And I think that's fair. Obviously, we're like super cast division on just maximum oh, damage off yeah. the board because we know we're dealing with, with Savage Roar or whatever else. But, you know, Kael'thas is Kael'thas. And that is just going to be uh, lethal yep. for Zim as he can go for the uh, Gidra into Savage Raw, no problem, along with the uh, Crystal Power as well. Not that he would need it, but it would help. Wait. I mean, he can still innovate it afterwards. It doesn't really matter what he does. Yeah, like yeah, okay. he's, got, he's got so much overkill, like it <laughs> yeah, yeah. really, really doesn't matter. It was just a second <laughs> yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah. I was a little bit worried. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is going to be game number two, though. Going to Zim. Wow, okay. Well, Drew there has done okay today, actually. But I guess that's one strong matchup and one close matchup we had if we look at Ball Control and Zim uh, from the games we saw today. So not doing too bad at all. It does mean Zim's yes. now only one win away from taking this series and sitting top of the pack in Division B. And honestly... Uh, probably feels pretty good for Zim as he's not had the most mind-blowing, you know, Grandmaster seasons today. First off, Raven, crucially, 
the record books don't record close wins or or routes or anything like that. They just record W's. And what we've got so far for Druid is two W's, okay? That's what's happened today. Um, I do want to rewind that game to the decision off the Lazul, though, right? Because, again, I think a little bit with Cast Division in mind, I was talking about the coin evasive Draconid line um, because I could see there was no ramp and it was going to be a very slow hand and therefore coin Draconid beat him up seemed very, very successful. Swids kind of had to make that read based on what he knew, which he knew some of the hand because he was looking at it with Lazul. Right. Um, but then as soon as the ramp hit, you see that coin evasive Draconid was just not really that good, right? It just lined up into the, the Guardian Animals turn, and uh, the Guardian Animals cleaved the board away. He did then need Iron Bark to actually make that turn particularly exciting. But what then happened is Swids ran out of cards, whereas what he right. turned down was two options for picking up card draw. So... I definitely do think that's a situation that, that needs to be looked at. And and honestly, to kind of go against what I was suggesting, actually, mm. uh, the problem with the runner, at least on curve, is if you put victory. it next to the... Um, if, if you put it next to the Lazul and assume the Lazul will live, like it actually did after the Apotheosis, right. then it's just as susceptible to a cleave. Right? Sure. So yeah. if there's another minion on board, the Twilight Runner can die. It's just, I wondered if there was ever a point to like either just save it for when it's not on, when it can be on its own on board, so that mm. you can pretty much guarantee clear uh, card draw, sorry, or not. But either way, card draw as priest, I like a lot. And it uh, was a little bit worrying. They didn't go for either of those options. But regardless, that game is done and dusted right now. We're going to be going on to our game number three. Zim, just having his priest left to take a win with, but he's going to be facing up against this road. Yes, and it's going to be the Highlander Priest once again. This does seem to be the uh, the preference of the fine nation of France. They do seem to be Highlander Priest gamers. Uh, it's going to be Highlander Priest once again here, and Swids making no bones about how he's going to play this matchup out. Tempo's out the Hanar. is going to load up the dirty tricks on top of this on the following turn. And that is the wrong zero mana spell. Would have loved a forbidden words in this situation yeah. instead of the scheme. Even silence, yeah, I guess. You'd take that as well, right? <laughs> well, not from what we've seen today. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, good point. Yeah, this is Swid's getting off to a pretty fantastic start. Even if he doesn't need this stunner uh, in hand this early, he doesn't have to utilize it. The fact that it's there and there's a secret active, at least for now, is huge. Because it means if anything early comes out from Zim, he can just bat it away, no problem. And this is just going to keep being the case because these secrets are no doubt going to leave Swids with a secret in hand. So this stunner yep. being forever active and now with a shadow step must give him even extra layers of security in this game. Got to be pack tactics, right? I think so. Why have one Hanar when you can maybe have two? Exactly. Do you want more Hanar or less Hanar? Those are your two options here. Bamboozle or pack tactics. I mean, either way, I think it's going to be a long time if Swids chooses for it to be that a minion's going to be allowed to attack anyway. Because he can just, <laughs> just throw them back to the hand whenever he wants, right? It's fair. He does also have uh, Noble Sacrifice up supporting that as well, which I guess does influence the way that the secrets oh. would interact together. It's, it's, it's all largely irrelevant because Zim just doesn't have minions on board right now. But he does play Broom in his deck, which I guess does make it a factor. Zim now. Probably just has to start with Draconic Studies. That is going to activate the Dirty Tricks now, which is not really going to solve any problems for Zim, because all he's doing is just opening up that space for another Dirty Tricks to potentially come down for Swids. He does need to yeah. start finding himself answers. And So the, for, for me, there are two ways a game like this normally plays out. Either Zim just loses soon because he's just not doing it enough. The secrets are going to uh, slow him down enough. Yeah, yeah, it's, the Blackjack Stun is going to be one. there. Or, he, or he's going to survive until Soul Mirror on Curve. And then we get true shenanigans. Yeah. Um, so that's normally the two way. Oh, okay. I guess there's the mystery third way, which is just the Murazon somehow. 
But uh, but yeah, this is looking pretty grim here for Zim. This is the perfect turn to play an additional threat, by the way, because it's the uh, first turn that your Hanar really becomes under threat from Cabal Shadow Priest, from Cabal Acolyte and additional spells oh, and all no, that kind no. of thing. Like, Obviously, Cabal Acolyte yeah, has been available for a turn or two now, but suddenly all of the options to just steal your Hanar become available to Zim. So playing an additional threat alongside that means that Zim absolutely cannot spend six mana on dealing with a uh, with the Hanar on the other side, particularly <gasps> if Swiss just even removes it from play. But is this even better? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Never surrender, make it bigger, steal it, get dunked. Absolutely dunked upon. We won't talk about the ambush. The play looks cooler when well the ambush doesn't appear on the other side. I think the play is very good regardless. This is like one of the few things that could have happened that made Zim not instantly lose this game. Yeah. I was actually wondering for Swids whether he could actually... If he chose to just cash out on the Hana mm. and just say, actually, this has done a great job, and then just faceless it. To have two 4-4s <laughs> four on the board. <laughs> that, that's a pretty solid board. Yeah, we haven't actually talked about the uh, the Swids special today. Yeah. The, uh, the Faceless Corruptor in Secret Rogue. Insta potion? Insta potion. Alright. Alright. And Switch. returned with his two bodyguards. I like it. Okay. Zim does have the opportunity to remove the Hanar problem again with the Cabal mm -hmm. Acolyte. Remaining secrets are Pack Tactics and Noble Your Sacrifice, not sure. so nothing that would really mess with this. Lines up really nicely as well, 4-7, up against two four fours. deal with the problem, so, make sure it's not getting Shadow Stepped, deny the value. Yeah, I, so I think he didn't know if that it wasn't pressure play. He didn't, you are correct, yeah. He didn't know, right? Yes, you are correct. Yeah, so, but... That would the, the spell burst still goes off before the plate would kill it anyway. Mm. So that still it still happens. Mm. It's just uh, there could have been a downside there to that turn mm. or Zim, but he got away with it. It was the only real play he had anyway, so I like it. Don't let the door hit you. What if he just bounces? Yeah, oh, it's so insane. I just say actually, nah. You can have to spend that mana all over again. <laughs> actually, you Unlucky. know what? You're good. Just, just, just wait over there for a bit, fam. Yep. I think this is a reasonable trade. Just get it gone. Add it to the uh, the pool, the dead pool, for uh, Zim. Sure. Question. Well, answered. My that question was, do you ever get to play Dragon Queen Alexstrasza if you don't play it this turn? And I think the answer mm -hmm. to that was no. So I, I do respect this play from Zim. As it happens, he might be about to get absolutely blasted by Potion of Illusion. Or just Deep Freeze. <laughs> or just Deep Freeze, yeah. So <laughs> many options. Actually, the Faceless Corruptors don't represent any value. No, they're potion ones. minions, right? So you can it, just get rid of those, play the spell lackeys, but can you get enough other stuff out of your hand to then get the potion off? Probably not, You could always right? backstab. You could always prep. Prep potion. Eh, it's backstab not worth it. I've taught, my, taught myself out of it. Why am, I, why am I finding a way to get baited by potion? I, Biggest minions, all face. Yeah, well, this is more like it. Most importantly for me is, there's no Soul Mirror, because you would have got Soul Mirror last turn. You got mm -hmm. Alex Strazard instead, so yep. act like there's no Soul Mirror and kill your opponent. Agreed. And this is a rogue at its best, honestly, at least right now, is where it just doesn't really allow you to play a game of Alstone. Because, to be fair to Zim, this looks terrible, but I don't really think he's had much- <laughs> Never mind! <laughs> Never mind! What? We're back in the game! No! Hello? Oh. Absolutely not! 
No, not okay. Nothing then, about that was okay. The only way the Severus is truly active is if you emote first. Nothing that occurred in the past 15 to 20 seconds is allowable in any way. Emote, Zim. <laughs> Embrace the darkness. <laughs> Wait, switch, so read where it's from. I knew it would happen. You'd be like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. He can play two of those? Nothing power. I'm not sure if, Zef if uh, Zim set that up expecting Brawl, by the way, but he was always going to get the uh, Shadow Flame, right? But I'm not sh I'm not sure. Like, I guess he played a 4-9 instead of a dormant thing for less mana, so that's probably fine. Yeah, All right. I'm on board. Yep, I think it's fine. Yep. I think it's better, right, than the yes. Brawl anyway. Yeah, agreed. No, no, I'm saying he was always going to get Shadow Flame, but I think he played his turn allocating mana for Brawl, but that's not oh, what okay. he did. I'm just wrong on all counts. As usual. Power. to strike. I knew it. Swids has had enough of this game. <laughs> he wants to get out and get out quick. That's four damage from the Eviscerate, three from the Sinister Strike. Yeah. Not enough. Mana. Needs the one from the dagger. Oh, that's been a theme today. Needing dagger active. Yeah, you're not wrong. Maybe there's a reason why Bunny always does it on two. Yeah. I actually like the coerce here. Go play dress instead. Yeah, I kind of like the coerce too. Just because, uh, you know, an apotheosis or something weird suddenly makes right. this gigantic minion. I guess Hello? it can still be killed the. Nothing that happened in the last minute and a half <laughs> is in any way okay, Raven. Honestly, if we're going that far back, nothing that happened today is in any way okay. Do you remember that that other Rogue versus Priest game? Ah, uh, good point. Good point. I wonder. Oh, Swiss is gonna go nuts. And she gets to deal with some secrets this turn. Noble Sacrifice is gone. Pack Tactics will not activate because of the board space issues after the Noble Sack. Is he, he going to clear this board with Arcane Explosion? <laughs> oh, please, no. <laughs> the Zephyrus Explosion, haha! -ha. You'll get, like, Dread Infernal, right? I guess now the pack tactics messes you well, up. Yeah, and it also de depends how much money he spends first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing was that, like, wouldn't Dread Infernal just be actively better oh, if he actually had the opportunity for a, for a 1 AoE clear? Not if you go in for the uh, moral. Destruction effect on your opponent. Your What's happening here? Bang. Heal? Oh, did he? Oh, please tell me he did something. Okay. I'm fairly sure he had no idea what he was playing off Zephyrus there. Great. My hand is too full. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's not active yet with 14 cards to hand. Sinister Strike, Cobalt Spellkin can add uh, Plague, the 2-2 two -two weapon, 2-2 two -two poisonous weapon, which can push face damage, can also add more Sinister Strikes to hand as well. Deadly Poison represents oh, it's damage. So close again! If he had Dagger up! <laughs> yeah, Bunny, Bunny's just right. You just always Dagger up. Yeah, just what, press what the are we Dagger! Doing? What it's are we doing? lethal! Yep. If you have Dagger, always. <laughs> yep. Turn 2 lethal. If he had a dagger, he would have got there this game. I'll tell you what, if he had a head crack, he would have got there this game. I mean, it, it always does, doesn't it? So. Yep. Also, in Zim's defense on the previous turn, that turn was incredibly complicated because you also had to factor in multiple secrets, which popped deceptively because the first one didn't activate the pack tactics right, activation right. and then the second one did you also had to deal with the new secret that they played which was a plagiarize so you also had to be considerate of any big powerful zephyr spell that you played being given to your opponent so there was a lot of moving parts I, on that turn 
I will say, I think at that point of his first attack proc in Noble Sacrifice, he would have had full knowledge of the secret. Unle oh, Explosive Trap. Explosive I Trap, yeah. Okay, yeah, Explosive was the one. Okay. I'll let him off this once. See, so looks like the most defensive option here. Unfortunately for Zim, the uh, embalming does not remember what buffs you gave CM. <laughs> it's not like he can put a, a sticky taunt. Nope. No! He's got a C as well. I mean, he's going to go heal on himself. Yeah, he absolutely has to heal himself. It's not going to make a difference because the uh, the coas the the coas is still there, He's able to uh, bust through. Doesn't even need to combo it because the minion's already freshly damaged. Eviscerate face, dagger face. As soon as Swid's daggered up, he then immediately won the game the next turn. Raven coincidence? You decide. Not at all. I think uh, I'm with you on this. Just, just dagger it. It was lethal about 100 times that game. But yeah. I think most importantly, a uh, little bit of relief there for Swids because after seeing the Zephyrus off a bright wing into draw Zephyrus, that's enough to tilt any human being off the face of the earth. Uh, so he got the win. Forget about the Zephyrus now. Move on and carry on with the rest of the series because that would have been heartbreaking to see that, at least from Swids' side, of course. I've never had it happen to me. I've I've always heard stories, but I've never I've never Rumors been on the wind. That, yeah, exactly. Just hushed whispers, people telling stories around campfires, just huddled up in blankets, just shaking from the trauma of the experience that they've been through of the Highlander deck bright wing into Zephyrus, but I've never actually seen it before. And then finally, with my own very eyes, I witnessed the horror raven. It was pretty incredible. Uh, I do think it was tough. I think if Zim was any more even in that game and not as far behind as he was yeah. at that point, it was very likely enough to win him the game, honestly. But yeah. because Swids had put him so far on the back foot, there wasn't enough wiggle room to make Zephyrus do something actually amazing there. Right. Uh, so we are going to be going into game number four, of course. Swids going to be on his Demon Hunter now going up against Priest. And a bit more of a... Um, uh, a more played out matchup. I think we've seen this matchup quite a lot ever since people started bringing Demon Hunter. Yep. This specific inter uh, iteration, though, kind of unique to the French players. The uh, the pen flinger Demon Hunter going up up against the Highlander Priest. It seems more and more that at this point that it's only the French representatives that are bringing either of these builds of the deck, with a with a couple of exceptions. Within the European scene, Within of course, Europe, uh, of course, I, yes, it, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I think, uh, honestly, I think I first saw it in Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, just another deck that a little bit ahead of, I think. Oh, good. Smite, smite One clean. drop to get. You don't pick the one. Oh, it might have been a really big deal, actually. Um, being able to lock out some of the key turns. Uh, whether that's a, a Soul Mirror turn is probably the number one you look out for. Maybe even a Murazon turn as well. They're pretty reliable uh, mana points in which to uh, go for a, uh, a mana burn from Switch's side. How much do you value Coin here, Sotol? There is Chaos Strike, but Coin Marrow Slicer wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Coin Marrow Slicer does look pretty solid here. You've suddenly picked up a large number of weapon charges that you do want to chew through here. There's also, weirdly enough, like Penflinger, Coin, Chaos Strike, Penflinger. Correct one, by the way. People have had this debate in a vacuum about which one to play here, like whether you play the top deck one because there's potential like mental damage to your opponent that you top deck the perfect card versus them having a read. Like your opponent literally saw it. They played Lazul. You play the one that they might have seen on the previous turn right. as opposed to the one that you just top deck. I actually really like Murzant here. Twin Tyrant, reasonable option, but I, because Demon Hunter normally wants to pack in a ton of like cards in one turn, I think having multiple Horizons just gives you power plays turn how, after turn. 
How did you manage to name both of the cards that weren't the untargetable tournament? Ah, uh, Kane exists. Strike it always just goes through. <laughs> but, but uh, honestly, though, it, it's it's less of a. I don't know. I think I don't value evasive that much against Demon Hunter because that's fair. That one, is fair. The one they can often hit it and just kill it anyway. Blade yes. Dance destroys it as well. Yep. They have Kane. Like I, I don't know. I think the other options are actually better. I mean, he already has a Mirazond in his hand, and it's a six mana seven seven taunt at this point. Like and. I feel like that's something that's pretty important to deal with on the, the Demon Hunter side. Because you can't just cane through it if they play it on turn 6, right? You're not going to be threatening lethal right. immediately at that point. It's going to be bad news for Zim, though. Did you like the hero power there and no Marrow Slicer? In Highlander Priest? No. I feel like he does need to fight for tempo a bit more while he's playing Highlander because he just doesn't really have the consistent <laughs> methods of healing that the other decks it, have. That sounded very funny. In Highlander Priest, I didn't like him shuffling multiple copies of the same card into his deck. It's mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. I mean, he but chose yeah. it to begin with, right? Like, Yeah. I just... Yeah, I, I don't know. I think having a weapon there was pretty key. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he needs to fight for tempo here, and I think with the tools that he has in his hand, he has the ability to do that. Like, he doesn't have a Zephyrus, he doesn't have a Dragon Queen Alexstrasza in his hand. Right, right. He mm. chose this card to begin with off of the Lazul, so I think just, like, mm. getting it played there and investing in the tempo is probably more important. And look at the cards he does have. Pendant, Holy Smite, Wave of Apathy with Cabal, Siamat. You just crush the game with these cards. Like, yeah, I think that turn off was a little bit odd. So it's, uh, it's starting to pile on the pressure. Soul Shard, Lapidary in hand. That Mana Burn might come into play very, very soon. Just want a Divine Shield Taunt again? Hmm. I guess so, yeah. I don't see if anything else really works. Again, there's Marrow Slicer Penance that he could do there. But right. it just doesn't quite fit that well now for the rest of his turns. I think he might have uh, missed the boat a little bit on Cam playing this Marrow Slicer. Yeah, and I mean, I didn't even really get to talk about it at the time. I, I can't remember what we were discussing at the time when he took the option. But like, obviously, I was surprised he took it in the first place because of the interaction we're alluding to where you're going to turn off all of your Highlander cards. Like, I was considering, again, as I was with Swids previously, just taking the coin in that scenario. Because then right. you, like, imagine the coin this turn, right? He could just coin out his Murazond and gain access to the uh, the few points of, of lifesteal that he might I need from the Aldraki Warblade uh, that Swids just played. So I do think having that uh, coin available might have been more important. But if, as Zim, if you're going to take Marrow Slicer... You have to play it, right? Like, or else why did you yeah. choose that card to begin with? Interesting turn as well there. It's like, oh. Yeah, okay, this this is good, obviously, because there's no Soul Mirror, right? There are other options of removal, and of course, Wave of Apathy slows things down. Yeah. But th there were options also of like Lapidary, uh, Hero Power, Mana Burn, and then go Lapidary, Twin Slice, Second Slice, Hero Power the turn mm -hmm. after. Maybe try and set up two turn. <laughs> Let me change your mind. Yeah, steal the one five, smite one of the one threes. Okay. I was looking at putting a turn together with like deathing the five five first, and then wave of apathy, and then what you could do after that. But I think this works out better. Does make more sense? It's just lethal, right? Uh, seven, nine, eleven, got thirteen with the pen flinger. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good to me. Yeah. Or hero power. <laughs> Either way, he gets yep. there. So it's, it's going to take the game then again. Just uh, not that the Marrow Slicer could have made... Well, I guess it could have killed one off. Could have got heals, etc. But I don't know. There was some mana floated there for Zim. And there's still cards such as Penance in his hand along with that Marrow Slicer. So tough game there. Mainly just not having that Soul Mirror as the you know the go-to response to the Militia. And uh, Swids just put forward enough damage in the early game and kept pressuring and pretty much just kept hold of that whole game, honestly. Yeah, and again, there could have been a marrow slicer in play. There could have also just not been a marrow slicer. And if you're sure, going to sure. if you're if you're going to present that argument of just like, well, I didn't want to play it because I didn't want to deactivate my my Zephyrus top deck or whatever. 
don't pick it in the first place. If you want to make the argument of like, well, I didn't have the mana to play it because I want to heal every turn, don't pick the four mana thing in the first place. Pick the thing that gives you more mana, and then you have the ability to spend some of those co- those cards that you died with in right. your hand. Like it just it seemed like just such a weird way to approach it to pick the card that turns off a bunch of cards in your deck, but then not even play it. Like, what? Well, well, I I don't understand what the plan was. To be perfectly yeah, honest, yeah, a little bit. A little bit of an odd one, but that does mean we are going to go down to our game number five, our final game of the day, and it is going to be a Priest Mirror, and uh, taking a quick glance, it's going to be the Highlander Priest Mirror Sottle, so one we've not actually cast for a while. No! Anyway. No. It does seem like this is a bit of a relic of the past at this point. Um, I would argue that it's a little bit less uh, tempo-based than what we see from the, the two of lists, but Still not quite the absolute grinding fatigue fest that uh, the previous expansion uh, Priest Mirrors were, but still tends to be a little bit slower than the uh, two of Mirrors that we've been seeing recently. Yeah, I had a, a quick look, uh, just trying to see both lists. Definitely hard to judge two Highlander lists, but it looks like Zim isn't running any Galacron procs. Uh, whereas Swids is running the Disciple of Galakrond and the Shield of Galakrond uh, in his list as, as the main differences. <laughs> coin again. I'm not I'm not going to bat for the coin this time. Don't worry about it. We're not we're not doing it. I didn't need Bitcoin! <laughs> yeah. The resource walls again. Oh, okay. It's a pretty good one, actually, this early in the game with already a minion on board. It is, yeah. She's pretty sick. There's just no answer unless I'm blind. Yeah, limited answers that could even really interact with this board. Like, sure, Smite or Penance could at least uh, take care of the 3-drop, but you're still going to be leaving up a spider tank that's going to start hitting you on the other side mm -hmm. of the board, so... Pretty big tempo plays early on here from Swids. That smite's huge. Costs him the coin though. I think it's I think it's worthwhile. Yes. Well, uh, it, it is relevant. <laughs> I think it's not only worthwhile. Essential here. He's going to start falling behind so far on tempo. Obviously. <laughs> what other what other two cards in the game could you possibly thought steal mm -hmm. than the two that create maximum clowniness in a priest mirror? Yeah. Both players are running Mind Render and Lucia in their core lists as well, so we have had instances of players deciding to cut it, whether it's in two of all Highlander. Yeah, that's true. I think Specialist Week was largely when we saw the Highlander lists cutting it. I think generally yeah. it's fairly core in, in Highlander overall. Got to make a good find. argument for 30 different cards that are all better than Mind Render or Lucia. Trying to find the mystery second card. I can't because I'm rubbish. Thanks, Mage Scribe. Penance. Creating. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> <penance and, laughs> I'm proud Sorry. of you, bud. <laughs> Penance and Volpera Scoundrel are the two cards that are different from the Galacron Prox. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. I can feel you really want to get this out. Just let me know when you're done. We're, Look. We're good. It was difficult to find, but I'm done. Your turn. <laughs> it was just the extensive silence. I'm like, oh, okay, he's actually looking at deck lists. I guess I better <laughs> yeah, I talk. Am. And then you just immediately cut me off. Like... <laughs> Perfect timing as always. Yeah. Go on, what are you telling me about my age scribe? I, I don't remember. It couldn't have been that important then. I think the yep. penance call was uh, definitely important. <laughs> I am looking at a wave of apathy Cabal Shadow Priest combination in Zim's hand though, which is pretty huge here for the coming turn. His curve looks extremely powerful from this point. Raise Dead is a great pickup here as well, and he's able to deny the Mage Scribe value. Mage Scribe, of course, we've seen is the bane of the Priest Mirror. 
christened from the uh, the great shadow word deafening of Blyze versus Psycho. <laughs> Look, it's le le it's the last game of the day, and we're in a priest mirror. I'm gonna go a bit crazy. All right, leave me alone. Yeah, I normally say that it's the first game of the day, and it's a game, so I'm gonna go a bit crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Alakon gonna come down and clean up this sea mat, and uh, now every single turn, gotta look if Zim wants to press that hero power or not. He does also have the active Kronks, which is a pretty big deal as well. But as you pointed out, and I was definitely listening, the wave of apathy along with the Cabal Shadow Priest steal on this dragon is huge. Aw, such a good listener, Raven. Yeah, I managed to listen to you while I was staring and trying to find that one good. card difference in Highlander Priest. That's good. I feel I feel really valued in our relationship. Thank you. What I'm glad. If... It's too good not to do, right? I agree. Yeah, it's insane. And it like weirdly gets enough resources out of the hand that makes the dragon generation fine. Whereas normally yes. when you do a play like where you gain an additional uh, card generation every turn, hand size gets a bit of a problem. But Zim not really suffering from that quite yet, at least. Yeah, I think Skeletal Dragon is actually one of the more overrated cards in the Priest Mirror. Like, everyone goes nuts for it, right? Because it's a 4-9 that gives you insane value. But, like, it's so hard not to overdraw in a Priest Mirror when right. you have a Skeletal yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon on the board. Like, it, you just... If anything, in Priest Mirrors, you have too much value. Um, and you need to play a bit more aggressively and push a little bit more for tempo in the early game, but... If there's a 4-9 and you can steal it with a Cabal Shadow Priest, you absolutely do that, regardless of what the card text on the 4-9 says. I must consider... We have a tough turn for Swids, honestly. Nothing quite lines up, which means he has to press the emergency button, which he's choosing to do. Or I was going to say he could have gone for a Soul Mirror and said... Okay, well, let's just keep things even. But again, that sounds like a bit of a throwaway of resources. So, tough turn, I see, from Swids. Objectively funny. Yep, you just play it. It's it's just the funniest play you can do. Just just do it. Uh. Maybe. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, on a serious note, if your opponent was willing to Plague of Death that board, why wouldn't you just remake the same board? <laughs> Mm. Alright. Not susceptible to Soul Mirror, to be fair. <laughs> Not susceptible to Soul Mirror. Well, maybe it's more so. Yeah. <laughs> which side, which depends on <laughs> you look at it, right? How is a 4 9 susceptible to Soul Mirror? Because he gets to have a 4 9 that gives him a dragon. I see. Yep. That's the good one. It's tough, though. I mean, Twilight Drake's really big. Twilight Drake is really big, yeah. But I think particularly because Swids doesn't have Galakrond now, he should just be picking up highest value things in most situations, mm. especially when there's cards that are just like value and tempo all wrapped up in one little sure. neat little well, bow like Mirazondas. I think m my worry as well is what does this turn look what like if he didn't pick it? Twilight Drake? And I think the answer is bad. So that's why I was leaning towards Twilight Drake as well. That is a good point. <laughs> like, it's kind of just been like... I don't mean to so sound surprised whenever I say that, <laughs> but somehow I still do. After yeah, years of practice. Every single time. Yeah. <laughs> Act oh, yeah. The turn is bad. It's really bad, yeah. Oh. And you can see he's now hard committed, right? This was the first time that answered the question, is he willing to draw his Galakrond? Absolutely right. not, is the answer to that question based on this turn. Six mana floated, Kronks in hand. What if... And honestly, with no play, uh -huh. is there even a punish that overly even exists to this board? Your opponent's stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't quite get it out before it appeared in hand, but your opponent's stuff was probably the biggest answer in that position. 
Switz does still have the uh, the Wave of Apathy Soul Mirror combination, though, which is incredibly powerful in spots like this. It, that's 100% true, of course. But even this, it's like kind of a punish. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. he's dealt with this. The board still exists. Um, mm -hmm. It's just he is defending as opposed to, I would say, really punishing this board. And that's why I think it's really good push from Zim. And that board was just an ugly shape for Switz to even deal with without a plague. Yeah. I, I really like it. We've seen how effective this combination can be against like Druid, for example, where you you know you essentially get to steal their huge board and actually be attacking with the big minions first. Oh. Against Priest, it's even more effective because not only do you get the big board back first if it sticks, but it also plays around counter Soul Mirror and counter Murazond in a lot of positions because the minions that you have on your side of the board aren't actually big enough to get traded away. So. This creates a lot of really weird, awkward stalemates in a lot of positions. This, sorry, this is so weird. Kronk's buff looks insane, and then you realize it puts all your minions at six attack next turn, in which they can all be Shadow Word ruined away. Yep. Oh, this is a tough call, honestly. Oh, he's going to lose his whole board. Look at Switz, he's loving it! He's like, you, you fool. <laughs> you idiotic boob. Yeah. Played what right I into my you to do. But he kind of did, right? Like, it... Yes. This was like the only way Switz could play this board. Right, but on the contrary, Zim can't just leave the board up from Swids either, because then those minions are attacking at full strength next turn while Zims are still shrunk, which is a problem, right? Yeah. I wonder. So we just get to make good trades anyway. Like the four fours could all just trade off into each other regardless. So I don't know. He had to do something about those minions before they they lost the debuff. As the Kronks. And so, Mind Render. Oh, wow. Okay. So, it looks like Mind Render Alusha was being hovered there by Zim, but <sighs> these are the problems with Mind Render in these situations when both opponents have. Uh, sorry, both players have so many resources. Zim has playable turns. I don't think he can commit to a mind render here. I'm not really sure what he's looking to steal exactly, but is he just gonna go for it? Share your thoughts with the class. Okay, there we go. Mind render played. Dex in hand swapped. Zim can review his options. He does get to play the Galakron. I <laughs> guess that's what he wanted to snipe, right? He that's the one card he knew for sure was gonna be in there. Yeah. Snipes the Galakron, then Swids misses. So, I, I, I no, because you've just given your opponent a Murazond. That's true. <laughs> I was just about to say, I, I, I don't think this actually pays off based on what he's given Swids. But what? I. Hello. Was this to, just to kill the Kronks? I'm so confused. <laughs> Oh, yep. the truth is Zephyrus. Which you now just play and take backstab or whatever garbage or it offers you, or right? whatever it offers yeah. you. Yeah. Would it offer you that, though? Would it offer you any of those if you have literally no good targets? So if you, like, Pyroblast, Tyrion, and Mind Control or something? I mean, you could probably take a Pyroblast here. That sounds fine. To put in your opponent's hand? True. Just a 10 cost card that just isn't really playable for the whole game, just taking up a board space. Hand space, but yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Imagine Pyroblast sat there like, look, I've been waiting on this board for ages. When can I just go phase? Wind speaker. Yeah. Well, none of those. Oh, we. Like, Zephyrus loves it when there's no targets for backstab and zero mana left on 10 cards. <laughs> it loves it because it's like, haha! This mess I can Yeah. I'm sure Zim absolutely cannot wait to find out what sort of catastrophe of a hand he's <laughs> yeah. being handed back here. 
What was the play? Like, why does he Alusha there? I'm so confused. Your madness is pleasing. Mm hmm. Shadow of Death off the top, though, does solve some problems here. He doesn't even have a hopefully terrible just board flood options, right? It looks okay. That's Death fair. Definitely a and just trade the board away and then just play a load of stuff. Like, it seems fine. And again, with this wind speaker in hand, like I'm not saying it's it's the best card I've ever seen, but it if was... he sticks even just an okay minion, it's going to be good enough. What if he just Storm Drake wind speaker right now? Just like clear out the board. Face. Not bad. Yeah, what about evasive draconid this turn and then go, go for wind speaker on that? Next turn. We go on the Vile Fiend? Okay, so he's gonna go for Psycho Pump. And you get. Okay, that's just funny. It's a bloom, but nothing really to. Oh, I guess he can clear off the Zephyrus, but. That come too late. Okay. He's gonna leave the Zephyrus up. Swids on the other hand now does have Murzon to respond, but not really what he's after. Maybe this is the turn that he can start thinking about edging towards playing the Alex Straza and getting some uh, heavy board presence involved here. Maybe. A lot of options here. <laughs> okay. It's also what, Pyromancer and Holy Nova. Has some level of impact on this board as well. Doesn't look like he's just gonna go for the Dragon Queen though. And the dragons are Alex Straza and Ysera. Wow. What? Pretty impactful dragon song. Hello? Pretty impactful. <laughs> yep, this seems powerful. Should probably do that. Your opponent's Alusha. No, the wait, that's your Alusha, right? That Zim thought stole in the first place? No clue. <laughs> I've lost track. Yeah, Zim's natural mind render is still in his deck. That was the one that came from the thought steal alongside mm. the Murazond, which the natural one of Zim's is also still in his deck. Mm. And and although there is the Alex Steel, of course, or whatever. I do think it's uh, good to play the Ysera first because on what, 21 natural health? Like the Alex Straza hitting Swids this turn doesn't really change much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I like it. But I'm just more curious whether he'll actually like hold it long term right, right, as right. a surprise ender, which is a little bit more sketchy to do when you know your opponent still has their mind render left in their deck. I think in most instances, it's just a reasonable additional cheap threat that just happens to deal 15 damage. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, well now we might see the Pyro Holy Nova play. <laughs> Downside of Ysera, of course, is the, uh, the Zephyrus now not being active, but I think that's a trade-off you take almost every single game, right, in this mirror? Yep. A Ysera over a Zephyrus seems fantastic to me. I'd, I'd, I'd rather be Swids. <laughs> yep. Obviously, eventually you are going to get to use that Zephyrus as a resource. Be it's it probably going to be lethal the, the turn you do. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, the only reason it feels like you won't get to use it is if you've already won the game before then. Why? Why that one? Why does he want to wait two turns for a 3-5 rush instead of just have a 4-4 rush immediately? Any idea? Does he just does he just want the, the, the stickiest minion? Maybe he doesn't need the minion now and he's more thinking of what's what's the the thing that's going to stick on board the longest no matter what mm. so if this board is cleared then it can't it can never really be fully cleared for the foreseeable future because that will pop out i do agree i think i would have just picked the four four honestly 
But yeah, or, or, alternatively, like not charged at all, which I think is sure, sure, reasonable is the there option, as well. Yeah. But it's fine. He spent his mana. Zim does have the option now of his own Dragon Queen Alexstrasza response. What about? Wow. Okay. I did wonder whether that was ever worth a, um, a wave of apathy as well. Mm. Does that not just benefit Zim most of the time? It's true, but I think like Zim does want the board dead in that scenario quite badly since he's kind of under pressure, like a ton of pressure right now. And I was just thinking he, about that soul mirror as well. Own, to... though, right? Yeah, yeah, he'd have it. He'd have the board attacking first. But again, if like Swids could like Murazond, which you think sure. still no is there. I'm not sure if that was already the, the Bronze Explorer was before or after the Alusha. But if you know it's there, then the soul mirror comes back the other way. Like it, it gets very, very messy. Yeah, and what is messy is the amount of dormant minions on this board. Like, yep, we don't see this often. You don't. It's kind of silly right now. Actually, on two occasions, Switz's, Switz's decision has been at least somewhat paid off. Obviously, having the Dormant Minion is resistant to the Plague of Death right now. Um, but also, I did just look at it, like, when the Soul Mirror happened, I was like, oh, maybe this was it. Maybe there's some break point where he was playing around Soul Mirror. Because if the Soul Mirror pops the Kaj, and then Zim would get a Rush Minion immediately, right? If he'd um, taken the other Rush Minion. Right, that's true, that's true. But it didn't actually true. change any break point um, from what I could see on the board. I do wonder if this is, hmm, is this ever the turn to plague for Zim? And he just says, okay, it kind of sucks, but he has the dormant minions, but then he has the follow up for Alexstrasza because I feel like he's always going to be behind <laughs> it, or he's just going to wave of apathy till the end of the game. Yeah, it seems that way, right? It looks like his hand just wants to wave until all of the dormant minions actually wake up and then see if he wants to plague or not at that point for maximum value. Definitely helps when you uh, create a second wave, right? That makes yes. the plan much more uh, easy. Agreed. So it's trying to shake that Zephyrus into being active right now. Kind of looks that way, yeah. So, knowing that Zim has a plague in his deck, again, trying not to cast a vision here. Mm hmm. But would an Elusha ever protect him? I guess he just gets waved again, if that's the case. Unless, <laughs> yeah. he, cast, unless he casts wave first and then it did Elusha. I'm just trying to think of weird ways Zim can like protect his board. And right now, Zim, uh, sorry, Swids' hand does not beat his own board, right? So I'm right. trying to think, is there, is there ever in a... Well, actually, if I just give him my hand, it doesn't clear my board. Yeah. Do, do I just win? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. It's a little dangerous to give your opponent the deck that has the dream portals in, though, right? Like, if there's still six portals left True. remaining in the deck that they get to draw from. Definitely lackluster that you would only get to push realistically two damage and plague this turn, which feels bad. I wonder if he draws this out a little bit more. But the yeah, second he plays I mean, Wave, he has to play next turn. Right. Maybe. And I'm a little interested that like Zim continued to play his own minions alongside the Waves. Like I was wondering whether he was just strictly waving to stall for the dormant minions to wake up and then just straight up go for the Plague. But he's also just kept committing his own minions into the board as well, which has kind of allowed Swids to pick up value off the minions before they get right, right. plagued away. But... Yeah, the game is playing more minions and trading off now, so... And, and I think he has to... So he's getting value here. He actually wants to just fight for the board the old-fashioned way and hold on to this plague. Wait, did he not wave? He did not wave. Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> that surprised me. What 
does Morazand actually do here? Holy Nova heals a lot of his minions up. He gains a 4-6. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem Amber, too terrible. Amber Watcher Holy Nova, yeah. Mm. Eh. Seems like a, medi a mediocre use of the best card in the matchup, maybe. But, uh, but what good use is left, I guess, is my question. True. Because then, even if it gets plagued, then he has his giant and his 7 6 dragon to follow up with the turn after, right? True, but it's not like he can't do something similarly aggressive here. Like, okay, now I'm getting lost. If he plays a one maker here, I'm starting to become unsure what's <laughs> happening. Because. So. so Prepare to be unsure. The, the Murazon play was an 8 8 and a 4 6, right? And then Holy Nova, which we can argue over how relevant or not relevant it was. But you had the capability of playing a 7 6 and an 8 8 with the Flesh Giant, right? Which is like similar commitment to the board. But you keep a Murazon, which is a better card than either of the two that you've used right. instead. Oh! Nightmare! That's a lot of damage out of nowhere for Swids. There's a lot Switch of things going wrong here. Like Yeah, Switch shaking his head here. Even he doesn't look too happy about that. Yeah, like... Why is his board full right now? Is a question. Yeah, he just played a 2-1 to make the Ysera smaller. But does that actually... Does Ysera having 4 attack change much? I guess now it doesn't get a trade into the uh, Nosdormu. This is just... I feel like... Each weird turn from each player is making the game more weird. <laughs> it's yes. just going down like a weird spiral, isn't it? it is not yet your turn. Zim is just going to take the hard reset here. Once again, preserve the wave of apathy and the plague of death. Which means Swid's line worked out fine. Sense. And this is the argument, right? You can argue that he's slow playing. He's not really like committing his big resources because he's scared of the plague of death. Well... Zim isn't playing Plague of Death. He's playing other cards. So what that tells you is that you're under committing because you're not getting the Plague of Death out of your opponent's hand. Count for me, Saul. Isn't that just lethal? Uh, 7, 9, 10, 11, 15, 23, 28, 30. Yes. Okay, Switz. 7, Look. 9, 11, 15, 19... <laughs> Wait, I got lost. 7, 9, 11, 15, 23, 28, 30. Yeah, I think it's it does, exactly right? 30. I, I did count it twice before I even asked you, but I thought we'd ask. We're a team. I like to work together. But, yeah. Switz, I don't want to be angry at you, mate. Just Nightmare Apotheosis, right? Right. Like, like, it's two cards, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's plus seven damage on board, right? Ah, uh, oh, never a more even... fitting result. Never a more fitting result on a Hearthstone turn, Raven. Swiss is like, man, I bet they're bringing up that stupid Marrow Slicer again right now. Oh, unbelievable. I don't know what else to say, because... <sighs> Maybe... <laughs> Nightmare is always one of those cards that you always check every yeah, yeah, single yeah. turn because it's so much damage for zero mana, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You exactly. have the board. There are big minions on board. Just count it. If I can count it, trust me, anyone can. <laughs> yes. And I will fully give you credit because I could feel you trying to interrupt <laughs> me for like, about 30 up. seconds <laughs> before. Yeah. I'm too polite for my own good sometimes. I know. But I could still feel it. The dramatic yeah, yeah. tension coming oh. through the airwaves. Well, finally, the play gets ripped, and this game just got significantly harder for Swids. Yeah, kind of. I mean, he might still well win, but it's significantly harder than already having won the game. That's true. I think that's a fair assessment on my end. <laughs> it's significantly more embarrassing. I can tell you that. Right. So a lot of pressure on board though for Swades. There is CMAP pickup now for, for Zim as well, but Wave of Apathy number 854. And get played here and slow this down once again.
Uh, hold on, Raven, I have a deck tracker, and it's actually number 875. Uh, sorry. I got close, considering it was in my head. <laughs> it's not bad, Cal. Yeah, Wind Fury Rush. Get rid of that giant by far the biggest threat on board, but there are still Dream Portals, and there is still a Zephyrus as well. Yep. So although Swids did miss earlier, he still has all the chances in the world to make this happen. Four portals remaining. Needs three of them drawn to activate that Zephyrus. I could just imagine every turn now, Swids going, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Wait. Lethal? Is it? How much damage does that Zethic have now? <laughs> three. Okay. Four with the split. Yeah. Nine with the nightmare. What if? Ten. Yeah. Okay, not quite. My envision ain't it. He's just going for it. He's just going for it right no, now. It's not lethal this time. <laughs> In a fire? In a fire? Oh. <laughs> That'd be too cool. What if he just... Nah, I probably wouldn't. Nah, nah, it's not worth it. I'll take the trade. Mm -hmm. Oh, he doesn't want to... I guess that's reasonable. I don't know whether he wanted to dream the car... Uh... The cards back oh! to his hand. Oh! Oh! No, you Mally first! Surely you Mally first! In Wait. what world do you not Mally first? You've just given them a one cost Malagos! <laughs> but you also know they have a bunch of random garbage spells in their hand and you don't have a Malagos on your board. <laughs> Hello? Wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. If he dreams that Alusha back to his hand and replays it, <laughs> can he do anything? <laughs> like, can he then re rewind the turn yes. and go again? Yes. Now we're thinking. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Time is running out. I just don't even know anymore, so I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've partially given up. <laughs> Keeping track of this game. Dream the Amber Watcher back into your right, hand. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool. Alright, I'm on board. At least, hey, at least you use the Nightmare. That's true. And the Soul Mirror? Oh yeah, the double- I actually just forgot that the minions had Apotheosis on them. Yep. Right, so what's going on? <laughs> Whose hand is this? <laughs> what game is this? <laughs> this is Zim's hand. And Zim's deck. Okay, so Swids is definitely playing this Malagos, right? Uh-huh. Sounds good. What if... Those spells is actually a huge deal here for, uh, for Swids. Yeah. You just have just to take the trades. the biggest board. Yeah, just yep. trade and make the biggest board possible. Yep. At least this one's a little bit simpler. Completely agree. And you could argue from Zim's side that, like, he was fishing for Soul Mirror specifically, which is why he played the Alusha, but, like, does that win the game? No. Mm. Does Mali tempo swing with some random garbage spells from their hand? Does that win the game? Maybe. Look how sweet that Nova would have been. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it actually wouldn't have been good enough. Like, I think he actually would have died if he'd have played the Mali first, because he, I don't think he could clear enough of the boards to, to mm. get himself out of it. But I, I still think it's a better prospect for, like, long-term winning the game, right? Okay, you can turn his 4-4s four into 4-4s. Four nice. Good to know. That's just value. Bop for one. <laughs> Both players at 30. For the second, oh no, third time in this game of Faster. Three portals remaining now. 
Continuing to deactivate that Zephyrus. Wait. It was an opportunity to Psyche split the goose. <laughs> not as cool, is it? Where did this plague come from? It's insane. Mm-hmm. Someone get me the history of this plague, because I do not know where it came from. <laughs> Zethic, okay. Oh, what? This game could have been over two hours ago, so... <laughs> It's insane, like, Switz is still doing okay, but slowly, I mean, this Zephyrus has to do all the work in the world, right? I, will act as your I mean, even then, like, even with the three Dream Pools in Switz's deck, because of the way that the multiple Alushas from Zim's side have pushed Fatigue against his favor, like, Switz just doesn't even really need to do anything. True, true. I was looking at whether the Morazon was enough, but it's probably not. Nope. Zim is just dead. Your mind is not your Unless he can make one final tempo push here that actually ends up winning the game in the face of no answer from his opponent, mm. but I just don't think that's realistic. Just don't see the cards in hand to be able to do that. Yeah, big, big difference that Ysera has made here in this game. Uh, it's allowed Swids to uh, honestly just get not only setting up the lethal, but get away with missing it as well because his resources yep. are just higher. He just has more stuff. And although that sounds like a very basic way to explain this single game of Hearthstone, it's also just kind of true. Can use the penance as well here. Yeah, okay. I like this. Valley trade the 1-4 and the broom, I would presume. Yeah. So all you have to do, just make sure you kill the last couple of threats. Yeah. And the game is over. It is Taking just going to slip away there from Zim. As you said, the difference in fatigue alone is huge. And uh, that's something the portals don't count for because obviously they draw an additional card when they're drawn anyway. Uh, it's just a difference in the Alusha's Zim went for. Yeah. If anyone's confused by the difference in fatigue here, since neither player has been drawing cards, it's due to the Alushas that Zim has played, because when you play Alusha, multiple players draw from your deck consecutively, without drawing a card from the other deck, so you end up behind in fatigue. Right. That's just going to be the concede there from Zim. Swids honestly gets away with it. Uh, he did have the, the mess up earlier on in the game, and he did realize it just a little bit too late. He still ends up the victor between the two players and gets another point on the board in round robin. And just taking a quick look at where these standings lie now, uh, Swids does still have one more game and it is versus Silver Name. So still has a lot on the line, maybe for different reasons in that game later this weekend. But I think sitting on those five wins is going to make him very secure to be able to play in the playoffs for a chance at Worlds. Yes, it means now Swids is sitting top of the table. It does mean if. Uh, Silver Name is going to pick up the win, um, which again, if you're a ball control fan, remember you need that three-way tie scenario. So Silver Name actually has to win that matchup uh, if you're a ball fan. Um, Silver, I mean Silver Name just straight up has to win that matchup, I guess, no matter who you're supporting, because right. I'm pretty sure he wants to win from his own regard. Um, 